Well, good morning, all of you crazy lighting enthusiasts. It's Saturday. It's January 11th. I've had my coffee, and I woke up to a great little surprise this morning. X Lights 20. Two, or 2020.2 because it is the year 2020 and I just knew that there would be improvements to the 3D experience. Whether you're going to use 3D or not, uh, that, that's okay and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'm not convinced everybody needs to use 3D. Uh, I use it for two big reasons. Well, three. Uh, the first one is... Um, my 3D models, uh, these extreme pixel force staky thingies here, um, I'm, I'm going to need to see those in 3D. And, of course, these luxurious presents over here. And, and right now, I mean, it doesn't, I can't do anything. I can move this around, but I don't, I don't like the way the effects are going to look. And certainly I can't get super creative in the 2D world. But the rest of my show, I wouldn't really need 3D. 2D works just fine because everyone watches from right over here. Um, but if you have a side yard or you have multiple properties or your neighbors across the way are all going to get involved or you have this crazy idea, hey, let's open up a drive through show, uh, well, you probably might benefit from 3D. And certainly there are other reasons and we can talk about some of those. But I also plan on making a, a another video about uh, some of those features like the camera angles, some really cool stuff that I think we can all probably benefit from. But let me click on the 3D button here, and I wanna talk about uh, why I'm excited about this release. Um, in some previous releases, my home got a little jacked up, things moved around, I couldn't get it back, and it was, what was I gonna do? Re redo my entire home. So I kinda of got the home the way I want it, and I made adjustments to everything else that's on the home. Everything in the yard, no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. But in the 3D objects, in this mesh here, this is how you activate it. Uh, the reason I like to activate this is so that uh, I don't see things through the house. Notice here that I can see the back top part of this horizontal up here through the window. I don't like that. that that's not good. And I just see some things that are, that are in the way. As a matter of fact, I, I can't stand that either. And it looks like I have these, these poles too tall here. So I'm going to kind of make a mental note of that. I'm going to want to change that. As a matter of fact, I'll do it right now. This is a good little exercise. I'm going to click on that top anger and bring that down. Then I'm going to hit my escape key. And I'm going to click on this guy here. Click on that top anchor, the top arrow, and bring this down so it disappears somewhere inside of underneath the eave like it naturally would. And it looks like I can go up just a little bit higher on this. Click on that. And yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. Anyway, let me go back to this 3D object mesh and activate that again. You have to click on it. Activate, there we go, there we go. Because what it was doing, it was hiding on the inside. If I were to turn my house inside out, uh, you might see where objects are hiding. And sometimes just by clicking in there and moving them around, uh, you can find them again. But uh, when I'm all done with this, what I'm going to do is put my brightness around 6. And what that does is in, in the sequence world, when I'm sequencing, I can kind of show you here. We'll just go with the animation. And let's put that on that. Um, let's bring this over here. There we go. So this gives you an idea of what's nice. Notice through here I don't see this horizontal sticking through my walls. It creates that nice little layer. Uh, I don't like to have a lot of the house showing uh, when the sequences play back because I sequence in a way that I just want you to see the show. That That's that's really it. Okay? Cool, 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 cool. Alright, there's that. Let's go back to our layout and look at some of the reasons why I like this. And I'm going to use an icicle as an example. I'm going to make sure I'm selecting on my models and I'll turn this back up to 50 so we can see the home. Okay, and then I'm going to click on models over here and now I can work on these. So these anchors here, this arrow here, this makes this go up and down. Um, if you click on an endpoint, 
arrow anchor you can make this go up and down and you can also squeeze it in to tighten it or take it back to where it's supposed to be and then you're good to go right you can uh, I believe you can double click or hit escape uh, double click is faster I'm still getting used to that because I'm I, I, I always hit the escape but the double clicking is a nice feature uh, that Gil added in to make it a little bit easier. Now notice this icicle here. To me, it looks like it's a little too close, so I'm gonna scoot that back. But you always wanna get in the habit of scrolling out. Use your scroll wheel, go back out this way, because we wanna to try to keep this level, this plane on the bottoms, the tops, as flat as possible and together. Hmm, that looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Uh, the other thing that was a real challenge with these icicles was uh, getting these things to curve or not curve but uh, slant at such a degree for these like gables that uh, so they would hang down straight and to do that we would click on this bottom anchor here and we could scoot this to the right scoot this to the left however steep it might be you have complete control this thing is so much better uh, at moving it around used to you might hit it just one bit this way, next thing you know it's like this. And then trying to get it back was just, it was really, really difficult. And this is just as smooth as butter now. So I really like that. And then if you just want to bring the length down, you can click on this bottom one. Uh, it's really, really easier to use. So I'm really excited. See, I hit the escape button again. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Let me see. Let me go back in here. Let me just scoot this up just a little, just a little bit. Okay, that's pretty close. Double click. Oh, and I'm out. There we are. That looks pretty good. Not bad at all. Um, some other things to look at. Uh, let's just bring this living light show flake here all the way out here. Notice that it's it's kind of straight with the house but not exactly I had moved my house when I was playing with this and naturally some of the things didn't curve with it um, I'd watched one of Gil's videos and I thought oh well, let's try that and it happened to be one of the releases that didn't uh, play so nicely but what's cool about this is you can click in the center section here now this is for resizing I didn't want to get into every one of them but when you click the second time uh, this resizes and then you get this, like, whoa, there's a giant one. What happened? Did Gilbert Engineering make that or what? Um, no, 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 no. It's still that. We just made it bigger. It didn't give it more pixels. I can click on this after clicking on the right size one. And then I can right click, resize, match size, and bada boom, bada bing. Now it's matching the size. Great. Now that I've deviated from course, let's go back to this and click two times in the center. And this will give us the orbital moving magic component of this which is just brilliant just brilliant um because now we can take this and turn it whatever angle we like pretty cool huh uh where this i can see this is really becoming uh a cool thing is let me uh let me just take this and put it back here so i can put it back into place here i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste this and I'm gonna bring it down. What if I wanted to put a prop on the house here? I could take this, change the setting, and flatten this up just like so, and then bring it down so I can put it right on the roof. And if I need to adjust it some more, I certainly can, there we go. And bring this right down. That's pretty close, pretty close. Now I could just uh, sort of uh, bring it forward, bring it to the right. Maybe I want to lie these down. Depending on the pitch of your roof, uh, this could be a very impactful way to fill up some of this area here with props. Uh, again, the best way to know if it's going to look great is to look from the street and uh, see how it looks. Because now the pixels are kind of poking up. It will still look good. It will still blend in. I had these before with some other uh, props on here. I removed them. I kind of just didn't. I didn't like the way they looked. Uh, I would probably suggest taking this and angling these up more like this. And it would probably look better. You don't want to angle it so much so that when you're watching from the street, you're blocking your outlines, you're blocking your windows, 
And for some shows it looks okay, but for my show, I wouldn't really want to block any of that. I'd want to keep this a pretty low profile. All right, so let me do this. Let me get rid of that. Do do do. Nice. We'll click save, and we're back where we started. So again, um, the anchor points are really, really cool in getting this alignment. And you want to get in the habit of looking from the top of your house because this will reveal the truth. A lot of times you might have a prop that looks like this, and you're never, ever going to see that from the street. It's, you're going to like, well, it looks good to me. And I don't know that it would have that much of an impact in the show, but if you're going to go to the time, expensive time that is, then make it look as good as you can. There you go. And if you go too far and it disappears, you know you've that's that's too much, too much. So just come down here and you can become you can get pretty granular with this. I mean it really the action of moving this really is improved. It is super smooth. And as someone that does this kind of stuff for a living, uh having the smoothness speeds up my process, makes it easier when I'm working on other people's uh, projects. It makes it a little bit easier, so it's very much appreciated. Uh, let's go over here. Let's just kind of scoot this over. And do be careful with these handles. Sometimes uh, if you're going head on with these, it might just go into Nowhereville. It might just t disappear in the back. Um, it's a good habit to start looking at this from the side and then bringing it back where it might be. And then take a look at it. That looks good. The whole idea here is these are my floods. I don't want anything to flood through the house. And that's about it. I mean, have fun with this stuff. Let me know what you think. Uh, share your 3D. Show me what you're doing. And uh, later we'll get into some cool 3D effects and camera views. Good stuff. Oh, by the way, uh, I will tell you even with this release, if you start doing some things and you go over here and you start messing with this, uh, it might, I don't, I don't want to say it breaks the link, but it happened to me earlier where suddenly my house was up in this corner over here and I could, I mean, I couldn't get it back. And every time I tried to fix it, it kind of went catawampy on me. So when that happens, just, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, let's save the change. Uh, I don't want to save the changes. Da -da 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 Whatever you, okay, just, yeah, yeah, do that, and then bring it back. Do, 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 If it gets funky on you, just close it down and bring it back, and look, it'll be right where you wanted it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I hope this has been informative and helpful to you. Take care. Catch you later.